let's talk a little bit more about uh, these issues uh, I was almost saying tonight. It is this morning. Uh, forgive me for that. I caught myself before I could. Uh, Priscilla, let's begin with you. Um, this story that is on the front page of the Daily Nation, it is one year since Uhuru uh, Kenyatta took office as, as the head of state. Um, a lot has happened in this year. There's been a handshake. There's been a big fall. I mean, how would you rate his first year, um, considering he has you know, a huge legacy to leave behind? I think it's a good start. He started on a very high note. The handshake was quite unexpected, quite a new thing, quite fresh, really, to speak. Uh, so that was a really high point. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he's also gone on well with the fight against corruption, which is the biggest advantage of a president who's not coming back to office. Now he can confront real issues of the country because he doesn't need the votes. He can really fight the corrupt. And mm -hmm. they are across the divide. They are in public, they are in private, they are in county governments, they are in national governments. We have little money as a country. Mm -hmm. If that little money is stolen, then there will be no legacy for him on the big four. So mm -hmm. I, I, I'm happy that mm -hmm. he's seen the point. Mm -hmm. It is you fight corruption as you pursue the big four. The resources that you free, you then put them on the, on the big four. The housing, the manufacturing, mm -hmm. uh, but I still feel that a lot of this need to be unpacked so that it's real. Like the housing, we are worried about the units. Are the youth going to benefit from these houses? Mm -hmm. Because we are in a country where one rich person could buy yeah. all of the government uh, units right. at cheaper prices at the expense of those who are intended. So can we have rules? For example, one uh, purchaser, one unit mm -hmm. so then the units can mm -hmm. can be we know there can be more available units will, will yes yes and we've also been worried at the commission about the disability friendly yeah. if the houses are storied right. what's going to happen to those who are disability mm -hmm. the manufacturing i come from a coffee growing zone yeah. uh coffee and tea so still very worried about uh, what's going to happen to these two major crops uh around that manufacturing are they the sort of products that we could manufacture the direct flight now to the u.s that direct flight should mean sales in in the united states mm -hmm. market mm -hmm. uh, so do we have a connection between manufacturing and the direct flight and you know what's mm -hmm. going on around but then the the, the last for me is uh, president sankara uh, there was a good president in burkina faso so i'm really hoping myself that the president is reading the, the sankara model right. uh, he made children get immunized pushed education supported gender in a very very short while burkinabes were really a different lot yeah. of people in just four years yeah. of uh, sankara's life so yet, that that sort of legacy is yes. what we are looking for but yet for there's him. an issue of of, of of the debt and the public debt and while there's um, you know infrastructure that is coming up some Kenyans are saying well you know the road system and, and, and the infrastructure is all well and good but what sort of debt will he leave behind for the people um, as well as even the war on corruption uh, I, Isaac let's get to you the president has been seemingly frustrated in in the last few months publicly um, you know admonishing his cabinet secretaries one in fact was admonished three times that's a CSQ and jury um, you know is, is, is he seeming frustrated is he afraid of being a lame duck president in his second term because you know that sort of support that would have been there for someone who needs re-election is lacking this time around uh, first and foremost, Yvonne, <coughs> thank you very much for hosting me for the first time uh, on day break. <laughs> I used to come here on power breakfast, yes. so things have changed, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, I, I look forward to many more. And Priscilla also, to congratulate you, you know, you. you know, publicly thank as you. being the gender commissioner, thank you. Uh, because we served with this Priscilla mm. uh, in the in the eleventh parliament, yes. and uh, also the last time I saw you uh, on the shows or somewhere. I, mm. I am happy that you made it back. <laughs> oh, I did. Thank well, you. Yeah. that sounds like a, an interesting story. We would like to, to know here on Daybreak. Yeah. So, um, but then coming to the president, I must uh. really commend our Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta. In fact, I was watching him yesterday um, uh, when we were with Ezekiel Motua, Dr. Ezekiel Motua of KFCB, Kenya Film Classification Board, uh, when we were relaunching the Nairobi Cinema, mm -hmm. and he, he there was a, there was a, a Blue Economy movie. Uh, and you could see a younger, you know, energetic president. We've not had a president who has been able to marshal and rally the international community uh, in the way President Uhuru has done. I think really this is very commendable. I mean, so, so many uh, engagements internationally. And also he's very v uh, vigorous with regards to the development agenda. And uh, sometimes you want to wish that, uh, you know, with the baggage of re-election of, of you and all of us here, um, uh, um, have, have, uh, at least I can talk about you, Priscilla, mm. uh, and I'm sure Dr. Sankok will also speak about it, uh, is that when you don't have the, the encumbrances mm. of being re-elected mm. or looking for votes, then, then you can focus. Uh, unfortunately, 
there seems to be a challenge around how institutions uh, speak to one another. And, and the other day, uh, uh, the Anti-Corruption Commission Chair, uh, uh, Dr. Abukala, was taking me through the processes and how corrupt people are able to beat the system because it takes so long. For example, if people push monies into different accounts, there is a way you can follow that money all the way and then you see it. It starts from one source, goes to different uh, sources, then eventually it comes to the same uh, place, like the Sampomo distribution. Now, for you to track those cartels and the network, it, it takes longer, more than two years. Yet, our law, and people know here, that people have developed this mentality that it will take about two years before any form of conviction is done. So, uh, really, I see David Maraga, Justice David Mar Maraga, being fairly committed as an individual. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I see a very committed uh, Norudin Haji, but sometimes the system, the way it works, uh, is really frustrating in terms of the rule of law, the due process of the law, and in terms of uh, innocent until proven guilt and the burden of proof. So you're so, saying the intention is there, but the system just yes, frustrates Yes, uh, yeah, and the processes, yeah. Okay. Uh, and the fact that we are an extremely corrupt society, extremely corrupt, Yvonne, and we must accept. Uh, you know, and allow me to say this on national television, in Nakikuyu language, uh, uh, we say, magamutuini, which means uh, you, you, make, you make ugali out of the flour. Mm -hmm. That is mean. The, if the flour is bad, ugali will not be good. Mm -hmm. So there's a way in which the president must be frustrated because he knows his legacy is predicated upon two things, mm -hmm. fighting the world corruption and bringing Kenyans together. Mm -hmm. With the handshake, we've seen a lot, of pro uh, uh, a lot of progress because the politicking has gone down. But when it comes to the fight against corruption, are Kenyans willing to change, you see? Because on one hand, people are, uh, will cheer, cheer him on, but when now he touches on the people, you hear people saying, oh, this is our own. Uh -huh. Oh, this is, a, this is our icon. Uh -huh. Oh, this is a, the, the one who you know, we look up to and yeah. so cannot be corrupt. Those yeah. kind of things. Eh? Yeah. And that's a serious pushback. But I would want to encourage him because mm -hmm. he, history will judge him very, very uh, fairly if he continues going, and he has a lot of support uh, from some of us and many others, because sometimes uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the in the rules of politics, uh, they say that uh, promise change, but when you get to power, don't implement that change, because nobody really wants change. Wow. <laughs> okay, that's, that's, that's a saddening reality. But yet, uh, Sankok, we are still consumed by 2022. I mean, it's just been a year since uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta took office, but you can't tell because already we are hearing, um, you know, your compatriots talking about this is what's happening in 2022. We have other leaders who are telling the president, we, you know, you will, there will still be a role for you after 2022. Uh, you know, where is that balance between something that's happening four years from now and actually starting to, to consolidate gains right now? Uh, you know, first of all, uh, let me congratulate uh, okay. Priscilla for the uh, appointment. In fact, I was one of your uh, members of parliament who are vetting you. That's true. And being a former member of parliament, you did very well. Thank you. Uh, for sure, the president of this republic have very good intention for this country. First of all, from the handshake. You know, sometimes you feel a president who is not only willing to forgive, but willing to bring Kenyans together. You know, the greatest legacy of President Uhuru will be bringing Kenyans together and uh, healing the country from this animal called ethnicity. From the time he, uh, he, he disbanded most of those political parties to create one uh, major political party called Jubilee that have a national outlook, which NASA also tried uh, as much as possible to follow suit, it was like our president that wanted to bring the country together. From the handshake, and even how he greeted, uh, for instance, Honorable Babu Wino, whom referred him as Mtoto Aumu. You see, if, if it was another human being, that was quite painful. But you know, he, he, he doesn't take those issues seriously. So he's a president who wants to leave a legacy, and the most important legacy that the president have already started, and we have seen fruits of that legacy, is unity among Kenyans. Uh, the issue of 2022 uh, is a bit tricky because uh, in the eyes of Kenyans, if you go for development projects, you are, a, you are politicking. If you do your work as a politician, you are politicking. But my sister today, you are a news anchor. Supposing I tell you don't anchor any news until probably somewhere uh, a certain date. You know, this is your work. That is your job prescription. 
for uh, uh, persons uh, who are politicians, the uh, job position is that they the do politics. politics. They mm -hmm. politics. Uh -huh. And politics is also a matter of planning. Because every political party really needs to plan ahead. Uh, if you hear people saying that maybe the presidential candidate of NASA will be so and so, this time let us leave for uh, Kalonzo Musioka, it's not bad for the country because at the end of the day you have to plan ahead. So for me, I Does it have to be planned so publicly? In I our see. faces, <laughs> every weekend, with a rally, <laughs> and reminding us that, you know, so-and-so will be uh, on the ballot and I'm supporting so-and-so, because planning is important, yes, no doubt. I, you know, but does it have to be, I mean, and considering, mm -hmm. um, and, and what you're saying is, is all well and good, but mm. uh, considering the context, mm. we came from such a bruising battle in 2017. Mm. Two elections, yes. two Supreme Court petitions. I mean, it was quite something. Um, and there's a sentiment in, in the country that, okay, let's like just, just a break, just a bit of a break. Because can you imagine, mm. all of that politicking has started, and today is when we're celebrating one year, let, or, let, or at least commemorating one year of President Uhuru Kenyatta's leadership Yvonne, in the second term. Let me ask you, if you are uh, elected as a politician, you migrate to Nairobi, is it to look after cows or goats mm -hmm. to politics? The only no. Different. no, no, no. No, in there's making laws. Development. You know, you know. There's oversight. Yes, mm. and you know all this. There's representation. All this goes with politics. That, you know, making laws, public participation, because you cannot make law without public participation. So asking for votes in 2022 no, we are not public <laughs> participation. <laughs> <laughs> no, that issue of asking for votes in 2022 that you should vote for me uh -huh. is wrong. Okay. But development should not be taken as a politic. Okay. Uh, the work of politicians should not be taken okay. as mere politics. So you just said uh, asking for votes for 2022 is wrong. So will we see you this weekend talking about 2022? Is that a guarantee? If it is uh, about 2022, <laughs> what, I know I'm asking what, a difficult no, 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 question. No, no, no. What, what we'll do in 2022, yes. like now we'll extend maybe the standard of railway to go to okay. Nyeri in 2022. Well of course, played. I'll talk about well played, well yes. played. <laughs> Let me ask uh, the two politicians this. I will leave you out of this for okay. one minute because okay. um, you're a commissioner. No problem. But we've said some good things about the president today, but mm. we know Binadamu Hakamiliki. Mm. Isaac, what is the one thing you think the president can do better? Because we've talked about what he's doing really well, um, but he, like the rest of us, isn't perfect. What is the one thing you would think, would wish he would do differently, he would do better um, over the next four years? Um, yes, His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta has tried and has good intentions. And sometimes <clears throat> good intentions are not enough, and people have a way of taking advantage uh, of the intentions. And by the way, Yvonne, you say nominated as uh, uh, Honorable Sankok. I am in the Senate, remember? Yes. I'm not in the National Assembly. Nominated it's, members it, of Parliament. No, <laughs> please, <laughs> please remember, I am in the Senate. Yes, you are. Uh, oh. Yeah, it's very it's important to have the difference. Okay. <laughs> but Parliament now, is by camera. No, well, it's by so camera. Yeah, but yes. then you see the, 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 the nomenclature well of MP is in the National Assembly. Noted. And Senate is Senate. Um, and it's important to say that because we are two senators who represent persons with disabilities. Yes. Then my brother, Dr. Sankok, and uh, Danita Gatti are the ones who mm -hmm. represent disability in the, in the National Assembly plus the others who are directly elected. Now, um, let me say this uh, clearly, that uh, I think the president has not been served well by the National Treasury. That is one place, honestly, I think we have failed. And I'm calling out uh, Henry Rotich and Kamau Duge. Priscilla and I were in the Budget Committee of mm. the mm -hmm. National Assembly, mm -hmm. and I am the Vice Chair, actually, of the Finance and Budget of Senate. Mm. And uh, the economy has not been very well managed in terms of macroeconomics. The person who really seems to be getting it right is uh, Dr. Njoroge of CBK. Mm -hmm. And I hope that uh, when he's listening to me and that he will make sure that uh, the petition I brought into, into, into the Senate and uh, the letter that I had written to him last year, which was responded eight months later, that the currency that is going to be made can be used by blind people, including now the mm. newly blind Rosemary Odinga. Yeah. And, and really, we stand with you, Rosemary, wherever you are. You are not alone. That's why we are champions of disability. There, the president, really, honestly, the dissolution of the Economic and Social Council um, has, has not worked very well. And we have, you know, the, the political strategy of amorphous formlessness that has been used by the Jubilee to confuse the nemesis. Uh, has also been used to manage the economy. It cannot work that way. 
You've got to have a proper okay, macroeconomic just, policy. You've just used some big words. Oh, mm. okay. Please break it down. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, sorry, yes, let, let, let me be simple. Please. But what I meant is, there, there, there are two, there, first let me differentiate the, the two political divides as be, p p uh, pre, pre handshake and possibly okay. going forward. Uh -huh. uh, ODM can be described as what I call structured chaos. They thrive in chaos. I've been an ODM member before, for 10 years. Jubilee uh, thrives in what I call amorphous formlessness. You have many people doing so many little things and you can't quite locate the center. So you are acquire some formlessness for survival. So you are just moving like this. Uh, and in the process, there are very few people who know what's happening. <coughs> and I have seen this. That is not the way to manage. You can do that politically. It helps because then nobody knows who your political strategy. Step, yeah, yeah. But when it comes to the economy, you must have a very clear macroeconomic policy. Today as we speak, uh, last week, the deputy president launched the medium term three. Mm -hmm. The big four agenda, are they predicated upon the medium term uh, three? You don't see a connection they between the There has the not MTP been a, a proper blueprint and, eh, okay. of the big four agenda. Yeah. Even for the, for the stakeholders, even ourselves on this table. Uh -huh. If you told someone to clearly define the big four agenda, they will not. They will not. And how does it lead to the, to the 27 projects of the Vision 2030? So in terms of the economic management, Econo macroeconomic management, leave alone the development agenda doing that, mm -hmm. there has been a problem. Why am I saying so? Because we have moved from a, 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 a budget of less than a trillion shillings in six years to three trillion. The current budget cannot be financed properly. We are talking about a ballooning, a ballooning uh, public debt mm. and now we are borrowing to finance uh, recurrent expenditure. When President Kibaki left this country, we were doing 96%. We were only borrowing 4%. Currently, we are in serious problems, and we must not lie to Kenyans because it's our country. Whoever will be president in 2022 will have a big problem when, when it comes to management of the, the economy. Maybe we have new in Rosa, and I must really congratulate the president uh, because of the blue economy, this, mm -hmm. this potential. And Nancy Kar Karigido, you hear me, you are a great Kenyan because this is, has been your baby. Uh, we have, you know, in Rose with regards to the, the, the oil in Turkana and other places, Eve and the, and the gas and all of that, yeah. and the lab said, if those one then can regenerate the economy, if we can do the value addition through agro-processing. But as we speak currently, the tax base is very thin. There are many Kenyans mm -hmm. who are not paying mm -hmm. taxes, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so the government is not able to collect revenue. So what does the president do? Because he is the one who um, appoints uh, his, his cabinet Please, secretary. please, please. What would it you was, advise him to I do? could say this without fear of doubt. The real finance minister for our country is the president. Even you, Yvonne, you must know your budget in the house. Right. If you don't know how much you are spending and how much you are earning, you'll be at, a, at sea. Uh, uh, Henry Rotich was a technical person at the Ministry of National Treasury. He, he may have been good if he would have worked with somebody who knew what was happening. But you see now when you have a president who is busy running the country, you need a very competent uh, 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 CS. I think it was wrong to appoint uh, Henry Rotich. I can say it if he have, without doubt. And I've raised it with him personally. This is not personal vendetta. Mm -hmm. I think so very strongly. Uh, in the best interest of the country, it was wrong to appoint uh, Henry to reach in the National Treasury. I don't think people like Kamau Dhuge have helped as well. Uh, I don't think people like Jiraine have helped as well. Those three individuals, they are not the Michael Aweros. They are not the, the Kenya who was promoted uh, to, 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 public, to be the head of public service. They, 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 are not, they are not the Kimunyas. You know? They are not people who you can for sure say they had a grip of the economy. So you need competent people. And, and largely, you have seen the president uh, being frustrated when it comes to the CSS. Because these CSS, and uh, on Priscilla, you can hear me on this, <laughs> they think that they will come and speak good English. And uh, pre pretend that they have all the good degrees, and that is what made them to 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 so to, why doesn't to, he just to, to, be, to be to be in cabinet, yeah. uh, Yvonne. And they have no touch of the people. They don't have people skills. And the ones that are doing fairly well are, are those who have been in politics. So I I postulate, I hasten to postulate mm -hmm. that I think some of these jobs in this kind of economy. Uh, and the level of development may require somebody who has a direct contact with people. Because when you do so, then you, you, you share a mandate with the president because uh -huh. you went out there to look for votes. Uh -huh. You must be accountable to the people, okay. you see. When you, are, you, when you are lofty and you are aloof, mm -hmm. it becomes a challenge. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
Priscilla? Yeah, I think that it is indeed true that we have a complex country. Yeah. I mean, we are not the easiest of countries to manage. And our tribal politics hasn't made things easier. I'm personally worried about our link of uh, politics and development. It's a very bad mix. So we end up having five kilometers of tarmac for everybody <laughs> and uh, going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you put five kilometers of tarmac in the middle of nowhere, yeah. there's not going to be a road. Uh -huh. So we have that problem. We have uh, uh, half dispensaries, you yes. know, quarter schools, quarter right. markets. You right. know, we have that, that, that is a complex country. Okay. It's not really the choice of anybody. So what I'm hoping for the president now, because he is not running for office again, yes. he doesn't need quarter roads and quarter markets and quarter hospitals. Right. <laughs> we need him to get an institutionalized system. And I like the challenge on treasury. I personally don't hold that strong view because, I mean, the education background of both Thuge and, uh, and Rotich is very strong. Mm -hmm. Really, they are the best the country could have had. Mm -hmm. But let them remove politics from their decision making and have a, a good blueprint on the big four and a blueprint that is institutional. It's not personal. You don't get a road. It's not a personal decision. Mm -hmm. So that for me, for the president now, we, for example, expand Uhuru Highway. We are all now caught up in traffic. We have five kilometers of mm -hmm. tarmac mm -hmm. in, the, in the whole country, yeah. but all of us are here in traffic in right. the city. Yeah. So why don't you not don't do everything? Because it's not possible in four years to mm -hmm. do everything. Pick one or two roads. Let the treasury help us with one or two, three, four priorities, yeah. which we do and institutionalize them. It's not individual. You don't have to complain about persons. Uh, there are systems around how you know cabinet uh, behaves, how cabinet is uh, is uh, you know mm -hmm. like how you admonish mm -hmm. the people in your team. Mm -hmm. So the president needs to relook his team, look at his team, yeah. uh, whether this team is good enough for his legacy, yeah. uh, institutionalize happy, it. it. Yeah, and then make sure that the things he's starting now can be continued after four years. Otherwise, when you are a boss and you leave office and the institution you are in crumbles, okay. that usually is not because a good a lot mark. of people say that quite a bit of what he's doing yeah. now yes. was started by, uh, by the retired Tibaki. president. Yes, yes. Which is Tibaki. okay. Yes. Which is Which is that's why this blueprint yes. is important. Yes. So that what we do now can be continued, can be continued in the by, next by uh, his, his successor. Yeah. But then we also have those four, five uh, you know in Kikui we say kuhutia you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> something like we can should touch. be on in order to <laughs> 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 you and I you and I you and I we appreciate the culture and uh, language you know? <laughs> what you can feel what you can touch what you can see okay. that yeah. is the project and yeah. it is what hmm? again kuhutia Kuhutia, <laughs> touching. Touching. We want yes. Yes. To feel tangible. 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 Yes. Put things on the table which we can. Uh, yeah. know, there, yes. By the way, where I feel the president uh -huh. is not doing very well uh -huh. uh, is what my uh, fellow colleagues have said. And uh -huh. you know, Nora is a holder of PhD. So when you hear him using very big terms, <laughs> he is actually uh, allowed to use. So, first of all, is the issue of debt. Borrowing, 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 borrowing. You know, at times even you, yourself, if you have to take a loan, you have to take a loan that you can be able to manage. Mm -hmm. When they come to a loan that we pay with almost every uh, revenue that we collect, right. leaving our country to now survive on another debt, mm -hmm. it's like now uh, borrowing from KCB so that you can pay the loan that we had from yeah. National Bank. Yeah. And then bring from uh, <laughs> National Bank to pay the loan that you had from Post Bank. Right. It is a, a bit uh, tricky and uh, it is not very good for this country. Mm -hmm. And again, the issue, and actually the president tried uh, to say that every project that have been started, let it be completed first mm -hmm. before we start the new yeah. ones. Mm -hmm. You know, these white elephants, mm -hmm. whereby, and you, you have talked very well, uh, mm -hmm. saying that, you have a tarmac road yeah. that starts from um, uh, probably a Maramlo road and ends in a Maram road. Right. So you just right. come from a Maram road, you enter into a tarmac road, mm. and then five kilometers <laughs> back to, you know, it does oh, not yeah. assist. Uh -huh. You know, you, we, we should actually put our priorities very well. Okay. That we want the standard gauge railway. Mm. Let us first of all finish with that project. Mm. Once mm. we have finished, we get the economic benefit mm. of that mm. particular one project before we move to another one. Because some of this does not actually give us economic benefit. There's five kilometers uh, of tarmac road in uh, somewhere called, in Narok, mm -hmm. a place called Naragiangari, mm -hmm. where uh, it does not, it is actually five kilometers. Uh, it was supposed to be five kilometers. Only three kilometers is completed and it's in the, in the middle. Not even from one end. So, of course, it so won't even last. <laughs> it's not even from one end. Uh -huh. So, the, the issue of drainage have not yeah. been done from this end. Yeah. They have not been done from the other yeah. end. Mm. So, you find it, that it uh, won't last. It won't last. Yeah. In fact, it has now three years and it is almost now worn out. Three years to do three kilometers of road. Only three. So, and uh, you see uh, also yeah. what is happening in this road of uh, uh, Maimayu, mm -hmm. the escarpment. Yes. Mm. A lot of traffic every yeah. day. The, yeah. uh, the engineer or the contractor is always on the ground doing almost nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, it has been done ever since I started coming to Nairobi. Mm. 
for almost 20 years. Mm -hmm. Why don't we just decide that let us complete this road once mm -hmm. and for all mm -hmm. and then we have a very good road that mm -hmm. can last for some, some time mm -hmm. but a road that is always going through yeah. repair. Yeah. You, you see that road is only mm -hmm. 9 kilometers. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure, the Honorable Mora, mm -hmm. you have never passed that road without a contractor being on site. That's he true. is always on site. Okay. Mm -hmm. So th those are some of the things uh, I guess that he has done well. Other mm -hmm. things that he certainly needs to do mm -hmm. better. Mm -hmm. um, this is Daybreak. I want us to take a break so when we come back, we can talk about the topic you're waiting us, for us to discuss. That is the gender bill that is due for a vote in Parliament this afternoon. Um, will it happen? Will it not? What are the views of the people around the table um, who represent uh, minorities, uh, who have come up through affirmative action? What are their thoughts on the way forward with this? Why is this the one law out of the 48 to you know enact the constitution that we have failed to do eight years later back for that after the break <laughs>